Hey all, here OS Reviews. In this video, we're taking a quick look at the Drio Space Heater Solaris 718. And now that winter is approaching in many places around the world, and this can be a good way to keep warm and allows you to stay cozy in smaller spaces or rooms without heating up a larger house, for example, potentially saving on some of the cost, then this might be a good option as long as you have access to a traditional power outlet. Now this company, Drio, we have checked out in the past, creating other fans, including their smart air circulator, which I did really like with a clean and minimalistic appearance reminiscent of more expensive Dyson products but just at a fraction of the cost. And this time around I would say that's still mostly true. This particular Solaris 718 retails for $130 and what also makes it a little bit interesting is it has a two-in-one functionality. It can still be used as a fan helping you remain cool in the summertime when the seasons change and also staying warm in the winter time. It's actually my first time seeing a kind of heater and fan two-in-one combination. And the design slash shape continues to be quite modern and streamlined with this cone-like structure, again reminiscent of something that maybe Dyson or even Bang & Olufsen would create, although I think it looks even more sleek and silver. We have the black version here that's a bit more stealth-like, and there's a third colorway which is black and gold with a couple of accents here on the very top that also looks quite good. Drio also claims that they've increased the surface area for heat to pass through more effectively versus a first-generation portable space heater, and also claims to be comfortable and safe to use in the sense that the housing remains cool as it's being operated. So thermally insulated wiring and also overheat protection. So if the entire thing is getting too warm, it will automatically turn off for safety and then you can then reset the fuse, claims to be flame resistant, and also there's a child lock function as well. So a kid can accidentally fiddle around with the controls in addition to tip the entire thing over up to 45 degrees, it should remain steady on the ground. And again, the temperature range that you can set in the heater mode include 41 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, becoming almost like a sauna or summer heat at the upper range but might be good if you're trying to heat a slightly larger space or room and it claims to be quite accurate up to 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit so there is a kind of air temperature sensor built on in. There's a display up front as well as a touch sensor on the very top for controlling it or you can opt to use the built-in remote control and just like on their air circulator it's also relatively quiet at only around 25 decibels on average thanks to the brushless motors and it is still an oscillating fan so it can rotate left and right, pivot around 120 degrees to spread the heat a little bit more evenly, in addition to cooling you off if you're using the fan mode, which comes in three different speed settings as well. Now maybe the only aspect that I would have liked to see from a feature perspective is this particular model does not connect to their smart companion app, unlike their air circulator fan. There's no built-in Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, so you have to operate it using the remote or the touch controls instead of controlling it with your phone from a little bit further away. So I think that might have been nice to find, perhaps in the next generation revision, they can also make it compatible with their existing app. Using PTC ceramic for heating and claims to cover up 300 square feet space, comes in just that cardboard box and we have the fan itself, which as you can tell next to the air circulator is still going to be a touch shorter. So all things considered, it really doesn't take up too much space in a room, I would say. And otherwise, we have just a quick user guide plus the aforementioned remote, which is in the same style as with the air circulator crafted out of plastic. It takes a CR2025 cell battery that will last a roughly one year of use before you have to swap it out. Otherwise, we can control it in terms of power, as well as adjust between the fan mode for cooling as well as the heating modes. There's also a kind of chime speaker for giving you some quick confirmation, as well as accessing the timer to automatically turn off after X hours as you can tell there, and you can go all the way up here to 12 hours. We can also turn on and off the movement here, so locking it into place or having it gently move 120 degrees, in addition to turning on and off that chime speaker if you want it to be completely silent. And kind of last but not least, you can move up and down through different controls, such as whether you want it to be at the highest heat mode, which is H5, or kind of dialing it down to heat 1. You can use it comfortably even if you are resting, studying, working, it's not going to distract you. But obviously the higher you go, the more quickly it's able to reach the set temperature if you want to keep a larger space warm. And like most infrared-based remote controls, it works well enough as long as you are pointing directly at the fan within a range of around, I would say, 5 to 10 meters. If there's a wall blocking you though, it's going to be a bit more difficult uh, compared to technologies like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But overall, not bad in terms of general responsiveness, and we can also tell that there are 
are controls on the very top, which are illuminated as well, basically replicating the functions that we saw on the remote control. It is a little on the glossy side, but looks quite good. Now the ring here for power is also illuminated, acting as an indication of how hot it currently is. For instance, if it's cold, it's going to be yellow, getting progressively more orange, versus hot is going to be red. Again, we're able to access all the same functions that we could on the remote control, including the angle adjustment as well. You can go all the way up to 120 degrees or slightly more narrow at 90 or down to just 30 degrees if you wanted to only move in a certain limited range. The screen is pretty easy to read, all things considered. We can also tap again on the menu function to go and check on the current temperature that we've set, which is 86 degrees. But again, we're able to dial this all the way up to 95 degrees maximum. We can also tap on it once again to enter the fan mode, as you can tell there by the indication, before cycling once again into heat levels 1 through 5 or into that manual temperature that you can then set. And by the way, when it comes to those heat levels 1 through 5, it's basically using varying levels of power. For instance, the minimum is going to be 700 watts all the way up to 1500 watts at the highest kind of turbo heat mode. And that will really crank up as much heat as possible, achieving higher temperatures more quickly as well. By clicking on these two buttons simultaneously, again it's touch sensitive, but after about three three seconds or so, you will activate the child lock mode, and now if I'm touching the controls, nothing will actually be changing until I disable it just by tapping for three more seconds. And as for some of the other advertised functions on here, including the handle for carrying it, it is actually true, located here on the rear, it's a little easier to pick up. And even now, as it's operating in the heating mode, the top section is thermally insulated, so you can still pick it up and carry it around, it doesn't feel too hot or uncomfortable to touch. And the cone-shaped design, which is again a little bit more narrow at the top, Top, slightly wider towards the bottom also seems to be pretty decent as far as remaining stable even if you're giving it a light bump it's not going to fall over as you can tell there so the anti-tip functionality also seems to be mostly true and two final points I want to mention is it does have a memory function which means if you turn it off which by the way if you're in the heating mode it's going to take around 30 seconds for it to cool down a little bit more gradually uh, when you turn it on again it will remember the previous mode that you set it at so for instance 95 degrees as well as whether it's going to be oscillating or not so you can leave it on your ideal temperature and continue using it just by tapping it on the next time. It also, by the way, has a 24-hour standby mode function. So even though the timer controls normally go up to 12 hours, you can actually long hold on the button for 3 seconds to go into a standby function for up to an entire day. And during this duration, again, the sensors will be calculating whether the temperature in the room is warm enough based on your settings and kick on by itself if it needs to before being quiet in other times. And overall, as far as performance is concerned, I can definitely confirm that as a heater, it is quite functional. For still a relatively compact model, it seems to be effective enough for around 100 to 300 square feet spaces with ease. It gets warm quite quickly, feels comfortable enough, and the sensors do in fact function. If it is, again, too warm, it will pause and turn off for a couple of seconds and dynamically adjust until it reaches the correct temperature again. Pretty smart, and again, relatively quiet as well. Even on the higher modes like this one, it still is comfortable enough for work or sleep without becoming too distracting. And really it's the same story when it comes to the fan as well, also quite effective for keeping you cool and feeling a bit more refreshed as well. And maybe the only slight downsides would be this is not really a air circulator, so again the range of movement is primarily on this one axis compared to being able to tilt up and down, nor will you find extras like a HEPA filter with an air purifier for instance. But having said that, it is a pretty well performing and relatively elegant looking to and one fan and heater from Drio. And kind of impressively, it's not only the top section that's thermally insulated, but the entire front panel here, even when hot air is blowing out, actually still remains comfortable to touch even at 95 degrees. The air here is definitely now warm, verging on hot, but again, the surface of the entire heater still remains comfortable. It's not going to burn you, or if a child touches it by accident. When not in use though, and lying flat, we can kind of make out heating components as kind of a tall and narrow strip, and the air will then pass through through here onto the front after it gets sucked in on the rear. Plus the cable length also felt appropriate, it wasn't too short or anything like that, having kind of a insulated rubber tip as well for slightly easier plugging in and also removing. Really adding to their collection of fan related products that don't really break the bank but offer a, I think, cleaner look than many other budget or entry level models currently on the market. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that has been the Drio Space Heater Solaris 718.